It's five years since Eduard Shevardnadze resigned as president of Georgia. This former Soviet foreign minister during the days of Perestroika is said to have spurred Mikhail Gorbachev into moving towards the reunification of Germany. In November 2003, Shevardnadze stood down from Georgia's presidency amid street protests led by the man who now holds the job, Mikhail Saakashvili. Welcome to Euronews. First of all, what is your assessment, according to your experience, uh, of uh, the current situation in the southern Caucasus? There are gas and oil pipelines on Georgian territory going to Europe from Azerbaijan via Georgia. That's its main strategic function. Probably the Nabucco gas pipeline project was also planned the same way, linking to the Caspian Sea via Georgia and Azerbaijan. That's the way it was all planned, but we don't know yet how it will be carried out. Secondly, we were a Russian colony for 200 years, and in that time we became very close. Why do you think Russians eventually have uh, uh, recognized this, uh, the independence of these two republics in Georgia? If we look at it objectively, we should realize that the Russians have a particular interest in Abkhazia. They need access to and from the Black Sea. When Crimea belonged to the Soviet Union, before Khrushchev handed it over to Ukraine, Russia had no problem accessing the Black Sea. There was Odessa, Simferopol, Ilichevsk and Sebastopol. Today they all belong to Ukraine, not to Russia. There's no logic in Russia's wider policy. They didn't recognize the independence of Kosovo, but they recognized the independence of Abkhazia and South Ossetia. If Abkhazia, being a tiny nation with a very small territory, can be an independent state, then why can't Chechnya, Bashkiria, Ingushetia, Tatarstan and Dagestan be independent as well? Russia has set a very dangerous precedent for itself. You definitely think that the European countries are um, blocked by their own problems of uh, energy supply. I wouldn't be surprised if that were the case. Because European countries do not have enough energy resources to manage without Russia, to lead a normal life, to function normally. But the European Union's position is shaped by the fact that along with them, Georgia was and still is supported by the United States. The United States is trying to avoid uh, the participation of Russia to the uh, supply chain of oil and gas of the European Union. Don't you think so? There should be another supplier. There's oil and gas in Azerbaijan, but not enough for Europe. It's Russia which has the greatest resources, produces the most energy and supplies the European market. How do you think uh, the Georgian administration, the Georgian presidency, the Georgian government dealt with, uh, with the crisis, with this challenge? Of course there was aggression, but it's vital to know who took the first step. The United States is claiming that they'd advised the Georgian president not to enter Tskinvali. I think it was Condoleezza Rice. Perhaps the occupation of Georgia would have happened anyway, but we gave Russia a reason. As far as I know, because I'm not in touch with the government. Russia put out information to the Georgians that there were no Russian troops in Tskinvali and the Roki Tunnel, which connects Georgia with South Ossetia and the North Caucasus. 
in Guirabshi that Khinwashi Rusi Jari are idga. You declared last August that uh, uh, Georgia must uh, have a role, must play a role as a, a sort of uh, uh, stabilizing factor uh, between Russia and the West because of its geographical position. Whether it's neutral or not, Georgia will always have a role because of its geopolitical position. And after a while, but not right now, it will be able to be an intermediary. Was this uh, the Georgia of uh, President Shevardnadze's idea of Georgia? The first requests to become a member of NATO were made during my presidency. There's one difference. In my time, we were able to have a very good relationship with the United States. They were helping us financially, materially and morally. At the same time, we had a friendly relationship with Russia. Putin and I were almost friends at the time. And Putin worked out many problems in George's favor. When you're in a relationship with both countries and you're balancing the relationship between both of them, then other kinds of opportunities appear for Georgia. When the United States decided to help us build an army, they set up a training project with their own money. Nineteen experienced specialists came to Georgia. I was the first to tell Putin about it. I told him that despite the fact that the United States were helping us to set up an army, I guaranteed him that there would never ever be an American military base in Georgia. On one hand, you say that uh, mm, Russia uh, made a lot of mistakes and now you're saying that uh, you are uh, very close to Putin and uh, that uh, Georgia uh, must play this role of uh, being member of NATO but at the same time uh, to be a sort of uh, stabilizing factor. Today Russia is our biggest neighbor and it has enormous resources. So the art of politics and diplomacy consists of finding a common language with Russia despite what happened. If I were president, I would maintain a diplomatic relationship with them. Thank you, President.